Welcome to the Michigan Financial Wellness Network deep dive into our uh, Smart Money Michigan Kids Read book for 2024, Owl and Otter, The Big Talent Show. You'll see the six characters from last year's new original book have returned again this year. So last year, if you recall, it was the big yard sale. And this year it is the big talent show. So same characters, but a new adventure about friendship and money and counting and math. Uh, money, fun, wants and needs and the value of friendship. So this is our title or our, our cover book uh, of the book, cover page on the right. The back is the back or the, the left is the back cover. So on the right is the front cover and you'll see woodpecker there with some cards and moose. And we have uh, otter and owl, groundhog and bear, the six good little friends. So the book plate inside the front cover You'll see a new little friend here. So this is the attribution for sponsorship, thanks to uh, funding from Michigan Credit Unions by way of our Credit Union Foundation. So this year to go along with the theme, I think last year was our little raccoon friend and this year changing out that character to align with the top hat of the uh, master of ceremonies, our good little friend, Owl. And then just the inside artwork, you'll see the friends here with their stacks of money. And you'll notice fireflies, the fireflies have relevance in the story. And there looks like they're counting their money. So then we get to the inside title page. And here you see a little groundhog with a hula hoop. Information about our author, same author, Andrea Mills, same illustrator as the first book, get to the story. One, two, three. What are you doing, Otter? Asked Owl. I'm counting the number of sleeps until the big talent show, Otter explained excitedly. Owl, Otter, and the rest of the gang were holding the big talent show on Friday. They couldn't wait to show off their talents and see other performers in action. They printed 60 posters using the savings they had left from selling cookies and lemonade at their big yard sale. The posters read, the big talent show, no talent too big or too small. Everyone welcome this Friday, free to perform, $2 to watch. And you'll notice in this story that Bear is wearing spectacles. Up to charge, today we have to put up the posters. I will hand it out posters to the gang. There should be 10 posters each. Can you count them to make sure? The group got busy counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Only Woodpecker didn't have enough. I only have nine posters, Owl. Can I have one more? There's a spare one here. Nine plus one makes 10 for Woodpecker. Owl gave the last poster to Woodpecker. Put posters up all over the neighborhood to promote the show. We want everyone to come, explained Owl. So we already have our first little, well, actually our first two counting activities. The friends went running and flying off. At the end of the day, everything was covered in the big talent show posters. Word soon spread about the show. By Friday, everyone was talking about it. No more sleeps until the big talent show. It's today, squealed Otter. The gang set up the stage with banners and balloons hanging from the trees. Fireflies were already showing off their special talent by lighting up the stage. It all looked magnificent. Ta-da, we're ready, announced Moose. And I love Moose's little tool belt and building the stage. So here, the idea of um, putting posters up you know, for older kids, could be a conversation about, you know, in business, we have to do marketing. It's obviously for an older group. A line was forming and excitement was building. Otter and Bear had the job of collecting entry fees. Welcome, are you performing or watching? Asked Otter. There are four of us. Two are watching and two are performing, said one performer. It's free to perform and tickets to watch are $2 each. So $2 plus 
that's $4, said Otter, giving them a reassuring hug. So here your little ticket, little call out here, $2 plus $2 is $4. Welcome to the show. Will you be performing? Asked Bear. I'm performing and my friend is watching, replied the performer. One ticket to watch. That's $2, please, said Bear. The performer handed over a $5 bill and Mayor Bear did the math. Okay, $2 take away, I'm sorry, $5 take away $2 is $3. Here you go, said Bear, handing over $3 change. So again, a little call out, five minus two is three. Using our, we could use our fingers to do that. We could use, um, uh, you know, the little uh, beads or, or uh, other counting devices. The line seemed to go on forever. Money was flooding in. Otter and Owl collected the money and counted it carefully. Owl clapped her wings together with glee. We have a full house. The fireflies shone brightly to light up the stage as the musical sounds of crickets and grasshoppers filled the air. The audience looked on excitedly. The big talent show was about to begin. So conversation with some of the librarians uh, led to all kinds of ideas um, using the setting of the big talent show. Uh, some folks have talked about like hanging up a curtain to like fabricate a stage and a curtain could be, you know, a shower curtain or, um, you know, living room drapes or, or whatever. Um, some other folks said, oh, we have a little, I have a little disco ball. You know, my teen has a little like tabletops, you know, disco ball, bring that in for the story time. Um, I've seen uh, lights, string lights that have uh, dragonflies or fireflies on them. So, if, you know, some folks are talking about that as well. So if you look at the audience, um, a very diverse collection of woodland friends. We have all of our, all these little, you know, different little friends of porcupines and fox and bunnies and bears raccoons. We have a, uh, you'll notice a little popcorn. There's a reason for that. We have that added. And then we have a bunny who is, um, uses a wheelchair in the audience also. Smashing as she appeared from behind the curtain wearing a sparkly top hat. Into her microphone, Owl announced, welcome to the big talent show. Thank you all for coming. Now let's get our first act on stage. It's Otter. So this is the center spread. Again, you get a close up of a uh, little uh, bunny family sitting at the back. Little friends here having their popcorn. Owls on center stage. You can see two of the friends peeking out from behind the curtains there. They're on stage looking at the huge crowd in amazement. What's your talent, Otter? I can do 20 jumping jacks without stopping, said Otter. Great, we'd love to see this. Let's count for you, Otter. Owl encouraged the audience to join in. Otter started his jumping jacks, paws flying in all directions. The crowd counted each jumping jack. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, all the way up to 20. Everyone clapped when Otter had finished. Otter wiped his spready, sweaty brow and thanked them. So you can already see that we've got counting built in in many, many places. Um, you know, I could foresee doing a pause during story time to let the littles get their get their wiggles out, right? And stand up and everybody do a jumping jack or two or five or whatever. So then we continue with our book. I will continue. Next up, it's Groundhog. What's your talent? Groundhog pulled a toy hoop from behind his back from behind his furry back. I'm gonna do as many twirls as I can in a minute. Owl smiled. I'll start the clock. One minute is the same as 60 seconds. Your time starts now. The audience whooped as Groundhog began swirling and twirling. They counted each one until Owl interrupted to say, time's up Groundhog. How many did he do? 60, the audience shouted back. Well, I never, 60 twirls in 60 seconds. That's a hoop every single second. Fantastic. 
Owl looked impressed. Suddenly, a pair of antlers poked through the curtain. That looks like Moose. Come on, Moose. Don't be shy, Owl encouraged. Moose emerged nervously to thunderous applause. I'm going to do handstands. That can't be easy with antlers. The stage is yours. Owl opened her wing to invite Moose to take center stage. Moose was soon doing handstands all over the place. Finally, he collapsed in a heap, rubbing his antlers. The crowd went crazy. How many did you do, Moose? I lost count, laughed Owl. That was my personal best. 32 handstands, smiled Moose. Good job, Moose. The audience roared their approval, having witnessed a new handstand record. Hang on, what's that noise? Owl silenced the crowd. The stage curtains opened to reveal Woodpecker's beak drumming away against the stage. Tap, tap, tap. I'm here to do a magic trick, said Woodpecker, pulling out a bunch of dollar bills. Owl, choose three dollar bills. Owl pointed to three bills, then poof, they disappeared. Where had they gone? The crowd looked on in wonder. Woodpecker's beak opened to reveal one of the missing dollar bills. Wow! But there were three dollars, said Owl. Where are the other two? Woodpecker's wings opened to reveal a dollar bill tucked under each one. I still don't know how you did it. Good job, Woodpecker. So you can see again, we have three and then there's one and then there's two and there's a money tie in there. And the, the magic trick has relevance at the end of the book. I'll give you a little tiny spoiler alert. Um, so then we go on. Next, Bear strolled onto the stage with furry arms full of juggling balls. Bear tried to throw the balls higher and higher. After dropping a few, Bear finally stopped. How did that go, Bear? I see you have three balls remaining, Owl observed. Hmm, I started off with eight balls and I have three here. Eight take away three means I dropped five. Oh dear. It was still really entertaining, Bear. Owl led the crowd in loud applause. So eight, you know, three left, there's five on the ground, all kinds of opportunities to do things with each of the talents that are on display. And that wasn't all. Lots more amazing performers showcased all kinds of talents. There was jumping rope, singing, acting, telling jokes, playing instruments, somersaults, and dancing. <clears throat> there really was no end to the talent on display. And so the idea here is, I mean, anyone who's had children, uh, young children, how many times have we heard, watch, 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 mom, watch, 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 watch while I dive under the water, watch again, watch, watch, dad, hey, look, look, I'm rolling on the ground, watch, this is great, you know, and these little talents are the kinds of things that young children, you know, think are these amazing things. So we wanted to convey that all of us have gifts, all of us have talents, whether it's jumping rope or dancing or telling jokes or playing air guitar. So you'll see here five more little friends who are performers in addition to the six main characters. All the performers gathered on stage and the audience was quiet as Owl wrapped up the show. We've seen an incredible display of talent today and we want to thank Thank you all for sharing your different skills with us, Owl said happily. The audience clapped and cheered. They were all grateful to the performers for sharing their talents on stage. What a treat to see all that talent on display together. So we know that there are a lot of words in this book and for story times that have, you know, our youngest learners, those preschoolers, you know, three, four, five years old, um, Librarians have the latitude to, um, you know, uh, kind of editorialize a little bit. There might be, set, you know, uh, sentences that they skip. There might be pages that they they skip over just to keep the attention of the children. Um, and the idea with this, we have two endings basically um, for the younger learners. Um, and again, we don't prescribe how our librarians implement their money themed story times in April, uh, but we give them a lot of ideas. We give them suggestions, we give them resources and obviously the book. 
Um, and a lot of librarians are very grateful that this is our first like soft stop in the story. So the performances have happened. We've done some counting. We've done some addition. We've done subtraction. We've made change. Um, you'll notice throughout the story, there's a lot of teamwork. There's a lot of support. There's compassion. There's encouragement. So a lot of the SEL stuff, the soft skills and things that early childhood educators, if you work with teachers in classrooms, there are things like that that are on their, their matrix that um, are things that they need to, to, you know, at the end of the year to say that they have taught things like teamwork and problem solving and being kind and supportive. So intentionally, all the performers are supported. They're all encouraged. They're, they all receive applause. And um, so here they gather on the stage. The audience goes wild. It's a wonderful show. That can be the end for a very young audience or, you know, to the librarian's discretion. However, there's more. If you go on to the next page, <clears throat> after the show, the friends counted the money. They gave every performer a $1 gift and that left them with $24 remaining. What should we do with all of this money? Asked Bear excitedly. One option is to share the money between all of us, said Owl counting it into six piles. Well, I really do need an inflatable flamingo, announced Otter. I saw some super uh, toy, toy hoops at the store. Groundhog's eyes shined at the memory. My tired hooves would love a pair of fuzzy socks, said Moose longingly. I'm looking for a piggy bank to stash my dollar bills. I need to keep them safe for my magic tricks, said Woodpecker proudly. And I'm definitely treating myself to a cozy blanket for the winter, Bear decided dreamily. Hmm, some fine choices. But the big difference here is your wants and needs, explained Owl. It's all very well to want an inflatable flamingo, toy hoops, fuzzy socks, a piggy bank, and a blanket. The question is... Do you really need them? Dun, dun, dun. So obviously you can see where we're going with this. We introduce the concept of wants versus needs in this story. Lots of things can be done with that, obviously. The gang thought hard about this as Owl continued. Wants are things you like, but you can do without. Needs are things you must have to survive, like the forest where we live, the water we drink, and the food we eat. We should always take care of our needs before our wants. Oh, the group all nodded their heads as they began to understand the difference. Owl came up with a wise plan. I suggest we keep half of the money safely in an account at a credit union or bank. That is our savings for anything we need in the future. The rest can go toward the things that we want. Each of the friends received $4. $2 to save for their needs, and $2 to spend on their wants. This gave them the best of both worlds. As long as we don't give it to Woodpecker because he makes money disappear, said Bear. They all laughed. Ha, 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 ha. The group learned they should use money to take care of their needs before their wants, and that some of the most valuable things in life, like friendship, are free. Thanks, Aldina. I love it too. I love these characters so much. Okay, so as we did last year with the first original book, Owl and Otter and the Big Yard Sale, we also have included a glossary in the back of the book, pulling out a few of the um, key terms or concepts. It's really another teaching tool uh, that can be used, you know, in a variety of ways, obviously. So, in the glossary, we've include, uh, included addition, subtraction, encourage, promote, savings account, piggy bank, wants, and needs. So those are the things that will be embedded inside the back of the book. And obviously that's the inside of the back cover. So I'm gonna pause and take a drink of water and ask if anyone has 
questions, uh, comments, thoughts, if you want me to go back to a certain section. Um, yeah. No questions? No requests? All right, then I'm going to keep going. Uh, let's see. I love it and can't wait to read it to children. Yay! I know. I love this so much. So exciting. Great book. Yay. Yeah. Lots and lots of backs and forths, believe me, to get to this point. <laughs> Um, okay, so I'm going to hop over then to the activity um, supplement that we put together. Then this, you know, obviously the book will be, um, well, let me go through the timeline. So it's already at the printer. Uh, we're expecting shipment. We will be um, sorting and packing 170 libraries uh, requested copies this year, which is 20 more, 20 ish more than last year. All 9,000 copies are spoken for. However, I typically have an overrun. Um, I can't promise that, but typically we get an overrun. And so I have a waiting list already of two libraries that want copies, um, but you know, didn't get their or get their request in, even though we started, you know, taking requests back in October. Um, it's now February 15th. So I have a waiting list. If you have any libraries that did not request their copies yet it's likely that we'll be able to fulfill their, their requests. I just can't make that promise until after we get everything sorted and packed and I can see um, if we have overage and how much over overage that is. So we expect to have the books headed out from Novi to our 170-ish uh, libraries on Monday, March 4th. So that is the timeline. We'll be sorting and packing them, you know, God willing, and the creek don't rise, as my granddad used to say, uh, we'll be doing that on March 1st and packing them up into the 170 individual shipments, and they'll go out um, leaving li the library in Novi on March 4th. So that's our timeline um, for the li the books that have been committed to the libraries. And that is, as you know, a separate pool of books, separate and apart from the additional copies that we ordered for library or for credit unions to use in other uh, programming. They get, uh, uh, Anne asked a question, do they get shipped? The, the books that I'm referring to, the 9,000 copies that have been requested specifically by libraries, we send those out on their interlibrary delivery trucks. So we don't use like FedEx or anything. It's in a private, it's a private system. But yes, they will get sent to them on trucks. Okay, good. All right, so I'm gonna hop over to, can can somebody just unmute and tell me, do you see the Popsicle Pucket, Puppet page? Yep. Yes. Awesome, okay. Say that fast 10 times, Popsicle Puppet page. Um, this was very popular. Librarians um, requested again to have um, uh, printables that can be either cut, colored and or cut out and uh, put onto popsicle sticks. So as a way to uh, recreate the story um, or just for fun. <laughs> um, so this is, oh, I'm sorry, hold on one second, please. I've got uh, a separate and apart from the book as a PDF file that I will email out to all the participating libraries and I will share with, um, Andrea, so that it can also be sent to participating um, credit unions who are partnered with uh, with our libraries. So these are our uh, cutouts for po popsicle puppets or any number of other activities. Some librarians, as you know, will turn these into like little magnetized things that will go up on their like their felt board or, or thing, you know, like libraries do different things with story times, but this gives a lot of optionality because we have um, all six of our main characters again this year where they can have children 
color them, cut them out, which helps with the fine motor skill development um, if you're working with early childhood educators in a school as well. So we have those again. Um, the dollar pages, the money pages were another request. You know, um, children's librarians love to have things like this where, you know, you might do a, there might be a store, you might have prizes, you might have, you know, maybe, I don't know, hula hoops and jump ropes and uh, decks of cards and, um, can you get the activity? Sure, yeah, you can have the, uh, Julie is asking if she can have the activity packet. Of course, yes. Um, so that's the page of dollar bills. And if you remember last year, we had a raccoon coloring um, sheet. We're reusing him, but put a line down the page this year with wants and needs to tie in back into the story. So the idea here is, again, you can use it as a coloring sheet, but for older kids or even younger children, you know, like, you know, here's a, you know, here's a cookie or here's some, oh, popcorn, right? So there's popcorn in the story intentionally. I had that added sort of late in the game because last year it was cookies and lemonade and a lot of libraries will do um, snacks with their story times. So this year, that traditional red and white bag of popcorn um, is an option that, you know, might be something even you could volunteer as, um, yes, that's going to get sent out. This activity packet will be sent out to all partnering libraries. Yes. Um, so the raccoon, we carried him over and just had it revised slightly so that kids can think about, well, you know, what are the kinds of things that you want and what are the kinds of things that you need? You could even do like a magazine cutout thing, right? Where we cut out pictures of things in a magazine and then you glue them onto the paper, uh, all kinds of activities for that. Otter's Footprint was very popular last year. So we decided to keep that in this year's packet, um, you know, cutting out Otter's Footprint. He could be, you know, can be used to lead to the story time room, put on the floor uh, and it just was relevant, you know, so we kept it in here. Count the jumping jacks. Um, so count, and this is like the uh, counting sheet. So having kids put the numbers in order, you know, you can cut these out, have them put them in order, um, both in ascending and descending for, you know, older children. Last year we had this sheet, but it was, remember, um, if you remember the story last year where uh, I think it was Moose got confused and started walking, uh, counting backwards. And so they were like, we're not launching a rocket, Moose. We're, you know, counting whatever. So we decided to keep that page in here because it was relevant um, and just tweak it a little bit. So it was the jumping jacks counting, not the, the mistake of launching a rocket. Um, and then here's an addition piece um, that librarians really liked. So you know, one plus one is what, two plus two, five plus five, again totally um, up to the story time leader, whether or not this page gets used, but it's an option. The coin page, again, can be used, used or not, cut out, sorting, counting, using, you know, making piggy banks. This is exciting. I love this. This is one of my favorite things. We did a word search this year. And so um, finding the words from the story in the word search, so connecting, you know, letters and words with this idea of financial literacy. And so these are the words that we have hidden in the word search. So, you know, money, save, account, buy, sell, deposit, as well as encourage, friend. So some, you know, money and number related words, but also um, some of the soft skills stuff. Matching game, you know, match the $1 to the numerical uh, value, $5, $2.10. So that was a, that was something that came up, um, a matching activity came up in conversation with, um, with the librarians. 
And then this idea of, you know, the word and then uh, relating it to the numeric value. So this was an easy sheet to add as an option. And then someone had asked for um, a printable of the stage itself. So maybe the children can draw themselves on the stage, right? And showing off what their talent is, or maybe you use this as a backdrop and use your puppet, popsicle puppets to act out the show. Um, so this sheet is just an additional, not necessarily a money related. So you'll see in this packet, there are some things that are, you know, I would say call like a little bit fluff, right? Just for fun, like coloring and cutting and, acting, you know, theatrical, but some of them are very math oriented um, and money related. And then I know all of you have access to, thanks Lori, I'm glad you like it. Um, you all have access to a lot of resources that you can incorporate and offer, right? So our, our role is you know, this program is the, the the youth librarians, like story time is what they do, right? That That's their, they love it. It's like usually their favorite part of their job. So as, you know, credit union partners, the goal is to offer yourself as a resource, um, offer your, you know, human resource, offer your intellectual capital, offer your, um, you know, tangible resources. <laughs> I know some folks will have provide the bags or they'll provide, you know, crayons or they'll provide the snack or, you know, to just, you know, make yourselves available and offer to help in any way um, that the librarian would like. And I know many librarians will allow our uh, credit union representative to be the guest reader for the live, you know, for the story time. But if they don't, you know, don't take it personally. Cause like I say, most librarians, it's their favorite thing to do. <laughs> um, so I'll pause here and see if there are any questions about the activity supplement. A couple other anecdotal things that came up, um, you know, in my home library, they actually have like a little, like I think it's for parents while they're waiting, something for their kids to do. They have like a little puppet area, a little stand up, standalone, like little theater thing with curtain and a bunch of plush animals. And so a couple librarians were like, oh yeah, we have one of those. Let's, we should incorporate that into our story time. So, you know, just talking with the librarian about what other assets they have, little, you know, other resources in their library or simple things that could be done. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe you have hula hoops in the room and kids get to do it. And, you know, maybe you print tickets and, you know, every child who comes in gets a ticket and then at the end they can redeem it for something. Um, I'd be curious to hear a little brainstorming from those of you, there's 30 of you in the room. So, any other thoughts we, and ideas? We actually made out made bookmarks and handed out bookmarks to all the kids, and they Yay. really enjoyed that. Cool. Yeah, I'm actually looking at the characters and a couple of them, especially Owl. Especially, I mean, Owl could actually be printed out and made on a bookmark, right? Owl is pretty narrow, could actually be turned into a bookmark. That's a good idea. Oh, Julia, yeah, you're going to do piggy banks. Awesome. Are these like, tell me about your piggy banks. Are they like, do they paint them or are they cardboard? Are they ceramic? Like what kind of piggy banks do you guys use? I don't know if you can unmute.
Julia Kaiser. I don't know if Julia can unmute. Oh, she says she can't. But I just was going to interject real quick about piggy banks. I'm sure a lot of these folks on this call have seen them um, or have maybe like utilized some form of them in classroom presentations or at libraries. Um, but I thought it would be applicable with this uh, book specifically. So they have those save, spend, share jars. Mm -hmm. um, so it's mm -hmm. like a piggy bank, but like with three separate uh collection areas. I don't know what it's called. Yeah, um, like three, three so rows of saving, Yeah, one for spending, one for um, sharing or whatever else you want to make that one. And since the book kind of talks a little bit about, you know, setting money aside for, you know, later use and needs versus wants and stuff like that, that could also be an option if people are doing piggy banks, if there's a way to incorporate those types of banks in there. Any other suggestions? Wild and crazy ideas. I love wild and crazy ideas. Oh, one librarian said she was gonna find herself a top hat and she was gonna bling it out all in pink. She was gonna bling it out in pink sequins. <laughs> so she would have a top hat. <laughs> uh. Give each child a roll of pennies. Oh, that would be a blast. Boy, if, when I was a kid, I would have loved a roll of pennies. I don't even know if children have ever seen coins in a roll nowadays. All right. Well, we are only 40 minutes in. I didn't think it would take a whole hour, but I um, allotted that amount of time. So if no one has other suggestions or um, questions or concerns, any... Yeah, that's why children remember it better. Pennies make dollars. Yes, they do. Every penny adds up. All right, well, I'm gonna say thank you for coming to our um, Owl and Otter and our um, big talent show, Deep Dive. I'm gonna stop the recording and, um, and then we can continue a conversation if people wanna talk offline. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. You're all so welcome. All right, thank you all.